Hello everybody, this is Chucky from the Clico Brothers. I'm in the process of repairing my MKS-30. I have to wait a month for parts to arrive from China. So I've decided to assemble my MPG-200 kit that I've got from Zonic. It's a PG-200 uh, MIDI CC emulator. So it receives MIDI CC messages and generates MP or PG-200 Roland programming protocol. This is the latest version of the controller. I have an earlier version. I don't know, version 1 or version 2. The earliest revision. It's been tested and updated to the latest firmware um, by the manufacturer. It works with cables that came pre-assembled. It works just fine. I'm using it for the MKS-30 and Roland GR700. This one will be embedded in the GR700. It will be connected directly to the PG200 controller internally on the GR700. The MIDI input will be connected to the back of the case so that it can receive CC messages and hopefully live. I haven't tested that yet, but it should certainly work. The PG200 works live, so it should be exactly the same. It comes with the circuit board. It comes with all the sensitive components, diodes and processors and also comes with all the non-sensitive components, connectors and resistors and such, screws and sockets. There is a full formal builder's guide on the internet in the link below. The side that we're looking at now is the component side. Every component is clearly labeled with its value and positions. So there is no formal schematic. You're supposed to know what resistor is and what values are and how to read them and put them in the right place in the right order in the right direction. The solder side is the side with the label. This is version 6.1 of the circuit board. And it's the same version that's described in the documentation on the internet. So this is probably the latest version. A testing video will be coming shortly after this device is completed and the MKS-30 power supply is rebuilt. The overall goal for this device is that the MKS-30 and or the GR700 can be automated real time via the sequencer using CC messages for programmable filter controls. I want to show you the setup. I'm filming all the close-ups on the GoPro. I have a 25 watt soldering iron. I have a wet cleaning sponge. I have some ultrafine silver solder wire. It's the last of my, my youth. This is probably 35, 40 years old. I have another roll of Radio Shack special junk that I hate, but it's there in case I run out. A pair of forceps. We're straightening things. I have all my parts laid out, ready to go. Um, I do find that the wired cords always drag down and it's very hot, so I burn myself too much. So watch. See, it just wants to bounce. Um, I'm also kind of crowded around the camera here. So here's a helpful hint. The little MIDI connectors have a rabbit joint on the edge, and when they overlap, they lock together. All the non-sensitive components, there are four different values of resistor, two sockets, a couple of screws to hold the circuit port to the box, and three BIN ports. These are all the sensitive components. There's three capacitors, microprocessor, uh, an opto-isolator, a diode, an LED, and four transistors. So I've identified all the parts. This one was most difficult because it's a five band 1% resistor that doesn't end with gold. So the color code is yellow, violet, black, brown, brown. So it's a 4.7K 1%. There's two 22K 1%. There's a two 25%. Those are easy to identify. That's what I'm used to. There's 1K 5%. All of the parts are identified very clearly on the board, where they go. There's the transistors, 2N3906, WS78L05, 2N3904, so there's two of them. 
There's a 1J63 capacitor. That's what it says. There's only one place for it on the board. That is right there. Listed as 100 nanofarads. I haven't confirmed that yet, but it's only one. So that's probably where it goes. And then two standard capacitors, 22 microfarad and a 10 microfarad. The 10 microfarad is bigger because it's a higher voltage, so that can be confusing. So you can't base anything on size. It's better to uh, definitely identify it completely. But my eyes are poor enough that I'll have a hard time dealing with it. But as long as I keep it on the sheet and take a good picture, which I'm doing now, I'll be able to get through it pretty easy. And the rest of the stuff is obvious, the sockets and the connectors. solder joints should be shiny and you should hold the heat until it flows completely onto the circuit board and the component being connected. So here's the Zonic website builder's guide, zonic.norway. 
includes pictures and descriptions of how to set up the kit, uh, parts list, and images of all the parts and what they mean and what their values are. Yeah, assembly hints, how to make the cables, what the pinouts are. It's all very good stuff. You should definitely refer to this if you're going to um, build it yourself. The firmware updater will let you pick a MIDI output and then choose which firmware to load. You don't need to do that. A SysX generator will let you pick which command gets assigned to which controller message. So this is a SysX file that you send to the MPG200 to tell it that you want these controller messages to control these specific parameters. So for example, the DCO1 range is controller 72, and then you can test it. The MIDI cable is running USB into the computer. The computer is running Zonix test web page. It sends MIDI CC messages in Chrome. I tried to run it in Edge and it did not work immediately. So I switched to Chrome because that usually helps and it did work right away. An MPG 200 settings SysX generator. And what it does, it allows you to test using these knobs the MIDI CC messages being sent out your local computer's MIDI port. In my case, it's USB MIDI on channel one. So when I scroll up to the cutoff frequency, the high pass filter and resonance, if I pluck the guitar string, I can automate the CC messages into the MPG 200 so that the sound is manipulated while it's playing live. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to the Pico Brothers YouTube video channel. Another world, in another time, in an age of wonder.